This video is going to cover the topic of compound shapes. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how do we find the area and or perimeter of compound shapes? The first thing we need to know is what a compound shape is, and it sounds like a word you might be familiar with from block class, with the, which is compound words. Compound shapes are made up of two or more different parts, just like compound words are made up of two or more different words. Sometimes these are also known as composite shapes. I just want you to be aware of that term because sometimes you'll see it composite and I don't want you to be confused. It is the same as a compound shape. I'll show you an example of a compound shape here. As you can see, this is not a traditional triangle or rectangle or square or circle, right? This is a compound shape. And when you see it, you might also be able to tell that there is a rectangle and a triangle piece. I can even draw a line right here to show that, right? So we have a rectangle, that's one shape, and a triangle that is another shape, right? So that's what a compound shape is. It's just made up of two different parts or more. The reason I bring this up is that sometimes we need to find the area and perimeter of compound shapes. Let's take a look at this example, right? It's similar to the one that I had on my first page. Say we have a garden or we have some other sort of design and it's shaped like this and we need to find the area inside or the perimeter around it. I'm going to go ahead and just label these with the dimensions that I have here. I used centimeters here because your grid paper is centimeter grid paper, I believe. Um, if not, we'll just go ahead and presume it's centimeters, but we're going to go with these dimensions, and I just counted the number of spaces. So when you have yours drawn, hopefully you used your squares as well. To find the perimeter, if I wanted a fence around this shape, right, we say do it the same as any other design that we have, right? We add up the lengths of the outside segments. So I would have to add 6 plus 7 plus 5, plus 5, plus the other 7, right? And we would add that up to get our perimeter. Hopefully when you add that up, you find that the perimeter there is 30. The area is a little bit different, right? The area is a little bit more fun. So remember how we can break these up into two shapes? I'm going to go ahead and break this up with my pen into a triangle and a rectangle. So now I'm going to find the area of each of these parts, and that's how I'm going to do, I'm going to draw an arrow here for the area because I don't have enough space inside. I'm going to do the area of both of these parts, and that's how I'll find the compound area. So for my rectangle, I just have to do my base times height, right? So in this case, we'll do our 7 times 6, and that means our area is going to be 42 centimeters squared, right? So that's pretty normal. For my triangle, I'm going to do the same thing, but it's base times height, and then I have to divide by two. Here you have to be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to kind of imagine my triangle being flipped around here, and this red line is going to be my base. So the base is one, two, three, four, five, six, six centimeters, just like it was across from it. But now I need to also find the height, which is not given already. So I need to remember that go to my top point of my triangle, drop my penny down, make my right angle, and see that my height is one, two, three, four centimeters. So I would go over back over to my formula here, and I'm going to do six times four, but then I'm going to cut that in half. And six times four is 24, half of that is 12. My area is 12 centimeters squared. And this got a little messier than I wanted to here, but the idea is then that I would take my 42 centimeters from my rectangle and add it to my 12 centimeters of my triangle so that I can see here that my area is a total of 54 centimeters squared. Sometimes under the topic of compound or composite shapes, we also have things like this, right, where we have a shape inside a shape, and you're told to find the area without 
the hole, right? So let's say this black space here is the hole. So what's the area remaining? So in that case, right, we're just going to find the area of the original shape and take out what we need to remove. I'll make that hopefully a little bit more clear. So the area of the big rectangle, right, is just base times height. So that means we have to do 7 times 5. And our area then is 35 square centimeters, right? If we want to know the area that is not shaded in, I also need to know the area of the small rectangle. And again, that's base times height, but this time that means it's 3 times 1. I already have my measurements there. So the area of this is 3 square centimeters. If I'm told to find the area of the non-shaded area, then I need to find 35 square centimeters and take away the 3 square centimeters. And I end up with 32 centimeters squared. That is the part remaining when I take out the shaded space. This was a really friendly example, right? The numbers were really friendly, they were both rectangles, but I just want you to be aware that sometimes you are not just adding space together, but you might also be removing and subtracting space. But remember, this um, essential question was how do we find the area and a little bit of perimeter of compound or composite shapes. We'll be practicing this in class, so be sure to have your notes and bring any questions you might have.